Greetings Indie Warriors and welcome to I Dream of Indie. My name is Old Gamer Joe and today we have a review of Mothman 1966, a pixel pulp visual novel. The game starts out with a gas station attendant named Holt getting visited by three strange men in dark suits but will inevitably shift over to a romantic relationship taking place along with a paranormal investigator and how it all comes together I won't spoil but let's just say strange flying creatures do eventually get involved. I really enjoyed the story and writing of of Mothman 1966 despite one or two grammatical errors that I did come across that wasn't a big deal it reminded me a lot of creep show or tales from the crypt where you would get these small condensed stories they were quick and easily digestible with characters you care about enough for the brief time you spend with them and I did find myself attached to this world and these characters I wanted to know what was going to happen next and it helps that Mothman 1966 is pretty interactive not only are you going to be making different choices throughout this narrative, there are some puzzles sprinkled in there as well. For example, at the beginning of the game, I had to stock the shelves a particular way, with the cans all being next to each other, or the boxes being next to each other. Later on, there was a card game where I had to try to win a stacked game of solitaire. It was far more difficult than a normal game of solitaire, but it was also nice that if you are not the best at puzzles, there were ways to get through them without having to actually complete them. Now, if you're not a fan of the visual novel genre, this game probably won't change your mind, but I did appreciate that it tried to break things up a bit. I always like feeling like a truly active participant when I play a visual novel, so it was nice that I did in fact have to pick up the controller from time to time. If you think Mothman 1966 looks interesting, but you're a little bit concerned about how scary it is, I would say this one's more on the campy side. There is some blood, some violence for sure, but it's nothing too over the top or grotesque. The game also does feature an auto scroll, so if you enjoy reading at a leisurely pace, that is an option. Or of course, you can just mash away at the button to read through as quickly as possible. But do know that by design, this game can be a little cumbersome when it does come to those puzzles. So, for example, there was one point in the game where I had to manually solve this jigsaw spinny puzzle type thingy, and you had to quite literally go through a lot of different text, hitting spin to the left, and then hitting spin to the left again, or spin to the right, and that was a bit annoying. I completely understand that they are trying to emulate an 80s home computer game here, but I could have done with a few of these sections having more hands-on controls. Still, it wasn't a major deal breaker or anything, and because the more difficult puzzles in the game are skippable, it won't be a problem. Though I'm not sure if completing some of these will change the story. I am eager to get back in there and find out though. As it stands, you will get through this one in about two hours or so, and there's not a ton of unlockables to speak of. There is a gallery that I unlocked for completing the game, so also be aware of that. Unless you plan to do a few runs, which you probably will want to, this is a short experience. I did not run into any performance issues with Mothman 1966, not a single one. It ran buttery smooth, and honestly it would be kind of sad if it didn't because there's really not much to it. But that's not to say that the game doesn't have a wonderful visual style to it. Again, that 80s home computer look, it shines through. Now, some of you might not be a fan of the way this game looks. I personally really liked it. There are a lot Lot of bright greens and blues, washed out blues as well as bright blues, so it could potentially be a little hard on the eyes. Didn't bother me so much. I like the grainy look of this title. It really feeds into the overall campiness of the game as a whole, also with the sound effects which sound very bleepy and bloopy like an old computer game, with some really nice sound design creeping up at the right moment when there's a thrilling scene you'll get some screeches or when a gun is fired. It's really well designed all around. This game is an enjoyable play, albeit brief. I really liked Mothman 1966. I love what it tries to do, and I think it's successful at it. I probably could have done with another hour or two of this just because I was enjoying the story, but at the same time, it was designed to be a short story that kind of sticks with you, and there does appear to be some reasons to go back and try to choose different options to see what happens there. Mothman 1966 is a delightful indie horror game and the kind of experience that you can only get from an indie developer.
Thank you so much for supporting clickbait free content here at iDream of Indie. We would now like to take a moment to shout out our brave indie warriors and legends that help to support this channel through channel memberships. At the Indie Warriors tier, we have Bill, Adriana Amato, CJR, Julian Colbus, Jesse, Ray Lynn, Marky Mint, Dave Hart, Peekaboo, Lex Noyle, Christian Cruz, PSC, Solarusi, and Chic Geek. At the Indie Legends tier, we have Nathan Moore, Skeptism, Mitchell Hall, Jen Rose, Chris Jackson, Mr. W, Blue Francis 14, The Beef Arenies, Business Cody, Chiron, Jace Glover, King of the Hatch, Ophidian Mind, Lord Metroid, C Coil, and Larkison. Thank you so much for all that you do for independent developers, publishers, and for iDream of Indie. Everybody else, head down to the description box below. Let's defeat the gaming echo chamber and bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming.